Hello everyone, this is Carlos with House of Tennis and in this video we will cover all the different type of volleys and I will guide you into some practice drills so that you can work on each one of them to take your neck game to the next level. The volley is an offensive shot played with an aggressive intent without allowing the ball to reach the ground. You can hit it anywhere on the court, but it's mostly play when you are close to the net. Also, the volley is one of the easiest shots to learn in tennis in terms of its technique. However, positioning, balance, and an aggressive intent are the key factors in order to execute the shot properly. Among the different type of volleys, we have the conventional or transition volley, punch volley, reaction volley, drop volley, drive volley, and the half volley. Now, when it comes down to the technique, all of them are a bit different, but they share some technical fundamentals. And the first one are the grip and the ready position. The first step towards hitting a clean volley is using the continental grip. Once that you master the grip, your net game will feel more comfortable. A continental grip allows you to play both forehand and backhand without having to worry about switch ups. To find the continental grip, Put the base of your index finger and the base of the palm of your hand on bevel number two of the grip. It's important to mention that all of your volleys should have a continental grip with the exception of the swing volley. Now, one of the secrets of sound volleying is to start with a solid ready position. Key factors for a good ready position are keeping the knees bent in order to give you an instant push in the direction of the ball. The weight should be supported on your toes. With the racket above the grip, the dominant hand using the continental grip, and the non-dominant hand on the neck of the racket. It's also very important to keep your racket head at eye level with your elbows out and in front of your body. Ensure that your body momentum is in the forward direction. The forward momentum goes along weight in improving balance and the overall execution of the volley. After holding the racket with the correct grip and finding the ideal ready position, the next step is executing a balanced and solid split step when your opponent makes contact with the ball. The correct posture of the split step for the volley is with a forward light jump with your feet spread out, shoulder width apart. This puts you in the perfect position to perform a forehand or backhand volley and allows you to react in an efficient way. The volley is a timing oriented shot with the power transitioning upwards through your legs. That's why timing and the correct posture of the split step is highly important for a successful volley. The next step after a successful split step is to recognize the type of volleys that is being received in order to set up the feet properly. Recognizing the type of volley that is being received is one of the most important factors for a successful volley. The top volleyers recognize the type of volley quickly with an aggressive intent and with a strong balanced posture, even during challenging volleys. For transition volleys, after hitting an approach, following the ball in the correct direction, and using a solid split step, next step is to coordinate a solid shoulder turn with a good load. We need to load and turn the shoulders while keeping the racket in front of your body, aligning your hands and body towards your target. For this type of volley, as you hit the ball, you want to do so with a firm wrist, but keeping forward momentum. For the transition volley, it's important to load by shifting the weight to the outside leg in order to use the ground force and push forward. Then use the opposite leg or inside leg to proceed forward by synchronizing your footwork with your volley contact. This forward motion helps you to give power and an aggressive intent to your transition volleys in order to stay in control of the point. The key for a good load is to move your body as a unit by syncing your footwork with your arm movements when you hit the shot. The closing volley is executed by taking a very short and compact swing where the racket is moved quickly forward and slightly down, giving it a bit of underspin to the ball. This volley type is more often used as a medium pace ball that are higher than the net. It's important to generate forward momentum to the racket 
to give the ball some pace and to step forward as you make contact with the ball in order to generate more pace. Practice the closing volley standing four to six feet from the net and have your partner hit medium pace shots to you and they have to go at least two feet above the net. Focus on using forward momentum with the body and legs in order to punch the volley properly. It's important to check the load, shoulder turn, wrist position, and balance when executing this volley. For the reaction volley, we simply place the racket in position to intercept a very fast stroke ball with no take back or forward swing. Your body does not need to move forward at all on this type of volley either. A simple and abbreviated swing is necessary and make sure that you use the backhand volley for balls that come directed towards your body. The backhand volley for the reaction volley will allow you to use the racket as your shield while sustaining balance. Practice having your coach or partner standing closer to you and work on dealing with very fast volleys at the net. This will help you improve your reaction and hand-eye coordination. While this is by far the simplest volley technique to employ, it can be very difficult to master if it's not worked on often. The drop volley is a very soft volley close to the net with some backspin. You want to make sure to bend your knees and keep your upper body nice and straight. The goal of the drop volley is to absorb the pace of the incoming ball and to place the ball far from your opponent who should be on the baseline or beyond. It's very important that you use a very loose grip and allow the racket to have a little bit of give. The best time to use this volley is when your opponent is behind the baseline and happens to dip his shot below the net. To practice the drop volley, have your coach or partner hitting medium to high pace shots below the net level. Keep a, good, keep a good posture with your knees bent and upper body straight with a loose grip and allow plenty of give on the racket. On the drop volley, the point is to put a little bit of backspin on the ball with the intention of hitting it a couple of feet away from the net. The dry volley uses the longest swing path of all the volleys and is ideally used on a slow shot that are a couple of feet or more above the net. Dry volleys are not high enough to be an overhead. You can extend your swing more since the incoming ball has very little pace. However, when driving the volley down the line, your tactical intent should be to punch it firm and through. But if you're trying to go cross court on a high drive volley, it's best to angle it with a little bit of side spin in order to pull your opponent off the court. To hit the drive volley, the shoulders are turned and the racket is taken back and held up high. Also, we have time to low with the, outs with the outside leg to set up into a power position because coming in with very little pace. On this volley, you can also take a nice strong step in and get your weight into the shot. It's important to move up to the ball and avoid letting the ball drop below the level of the net. Attacking the drive volley won't allow your opponent to get back in the position. The objective on this volley is to hit the ball with pace and placement while finishing the point immediately. Practice a drive volley by having your coach or your hitting partner fit in a high to slow pace ball at least three feet above the net. Work on directing the volley in either a cross court angle or firm down the line, focusing on the technique and balance of the stroke. The half volley is a volley used on a ball that has already bounced. This volley is most often used when we can't get up to the ball fast enough to volley it out of the air. It's very important to stay low with a nice and relaxed hand and either hit a drop shot to surprise the baseline opponent or to block the ball firm to the open court. The half volley requires a good hand-eye coordination and lots of practice to master. Practice the half volley standing six to 10 feet from the net and have your partner or coach to feed you medium or hard pace shots that land right in front of you. 
A clear target intent and good racket feel is essential to improve your half volleys. Efficient footwork is essential in good volley. You must be able to move quickly but maintain your balance once you get to where you're going. Under ordinary circumstances, you'll have time for only one step in either direction to maximize your reach with proper footwork. Now, it's very important to sustain a balanced and athletic posture. Also remember to keep the correct wrist position and the racket head at the right level, and also try to keep your knees bent in order to handle those low volumes. After hitting an approach or a transition volley, it's highly important to pay attention to your positioning at the net on the next shot. Once you hit an approach, you need to follow the direction of the ball in order to give yourself the best chance to cover the next incoming shot. A common mistake is to run into a central position in the service box instead of adjusting your net position based on the direction of your approach shot or transition volley. To improve the technique of transition and reaction volleys, work on locking your wrist in a position creating an L shape with your dominant form and use a very short backswing with a slight undercut. This will give you the necessary control you need for a successful low volley. The power will be supplied by proper footwork and the pace from the incoming ball. When you find yourself at the net after hitting a weak approach or a volley, your goal needs to be trying to read the opponent's shot direction in order to position yourself correctly without having to cover much ground. The closer you are to the net, the more of an angle you will be able to cover. To conclude, aggressive tennis means to have a style of play that allows a player to control a point or a match and minimizing the ability of the opponent to win the same point or match. Therefore, improving your net game requires hard work and a commitment to move forward as much as you can in order to improve all aspects of offensive tennis. Leaving your comfort zone of just hitting ground strokes from the baseline and adding a confident net game will help you to grow your skill set as a tennis player. Remember that leaving your comfort zone transforms you. This is not an easy road to travel. It is full of up and downs and it's certainly a challenge. But if you can fully commit to develop your net game, I assure you that you will be on your way to becoming a more complete and a better tennis player. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, use the comment section.